Hello, hello. Welcome to Shady NY. Welcome back to part two of this thread up DIY jewelry box. If you aren't familiar with thread up, a lot of people have been asking, how do you get these boxes? You just go on threadup.com, go to the header that says rescues and patiently wait and wait and wait for the boxes to pop up. They're very random. ThreadUp doesn't give out a schedule the way Goodwill Blue Box. They, Goodwill Blue Box releases their boxes at the same time every single Friday. But ThreadUp is very, very random. So it's kind of hard to get it. As I've said before, I leave it up on my browser. And when I'm sitting working, I occasionally click into it. Sometimes they pop up. And that's when you get them. It's a luck of the draw with um, thread up. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you for returning to part two. I am blown away with the support and love that you guys showed for us. We appreciate it. We are enjoying it. As I said um, yesterday, we are very unscripted. We do not write anything down. We sit down, turn on the camera, and go with whatever pulls out of the box. Or if I am getting something from a jewelry jar, it's all a surprise. If it's even an auction hall, I do not open those bags and do any research until we are doing it together. Then I will stop, do a little bit of research, and anything that I don't know, I like to slide in there so we're all learning together. But I greatly appreciate all the watchers and the subscribers that we have. You guys are amazing. You're very, very supportive, and I appreciate all the well wishes and compliments you've shown us. We really, really appreciate it. Y'all make us want to have a better channel, and because of y'all tuning in, we do, definitely. So, let's move on. As I said, this is part two. I will be giving prices, and if I don't give a price, I'll try to leave it in the description area below. If you see something that you're interested in, definitely shoot us an email with either a screenshot or a timestamp. Also, send us your PayPal email, your mailing address, if you haven't already purchased with us before. If you're interested in something and want to know if it's sold, check the sold list below. I am pinning anything that has sold down there. Of course, things can cross, so it might not be there yet. Also, it is $5 for shipping. In the United States, up to a pound, anything over a pound or outside the United States will be based on where you're located and also how much it weighs. So let's get on with the jewelry. Oh my goodness. I just deleted half of this video. So I'm reconstructing it, so it might be a little out of whack. So I'm gonna try to add some stuff back in. I cannot believe that I hit the wrong button and boom, some of it was gone. So if it seems a little out of order, but I'm gonna try to do this, keep your fingers crossed that it will make sense. See you shortly. Okay, this is gorgeous. We know it's not amber. And I did the hot water test and it does smell. The website, the sprucecrafts.com is a great website and an article of seven ways to identify Bakelite, Bakelite, however you say it. The clasp is definitely pre-1940s, so that gives us a clue that, yes, this could be Bakelite. Bakelite. 
So we did the smell test and it does smell, it's supposed to smell like formaldehyde. And my smeller isn't as good as Barry smeller. He definitely says that it smells chemically formaldehyde-y and I definitely think it smells like old. So yes, I think that actually is one of the best test is a hot water test. So I'm going to do the semichrome test because I do not have any formula 409. And I also have some absolute 100% Bakelite that I have. And I'm going to also show you the test on these. And then I will show you some plastic and we'll compare. Here's the semichrome polish. I just bought this on Amazon. Q-tip. You don't want much, you don't need much. And it should come up in differing degrees. I've heard so many people say that if it isn't dark um, tobacco color, then it's not um, Bakelite. However, according to the Spruce Crafts website, it's, let's see, the actual term, how they're saying it. To test with Simicrone, sparingly apply a dab of cream to a soft cloth and gently rub a small spot on the inside or back of the item being tested. If it is Bakelite, the cloth should turn yellow with ease, although the color may vary from a light, light yellow to a dark yellow. So just so you know, these people who are saying it has to be a dark tobacco color it doesn't actually. And this piece, I know for a fact, ran it under hot water and oh, this one stinks to high heaven for me. See, this one's a little darker, but not much. I mean, they're close. Here's the two colors. And these other two, I know for a fact also, they are. These I purchased from my local jeweler. There you go. I'll put them all next to each other so we can tell the yellows. Incredibly close. Also, another thing is I will show you one moment. Let me get this off. We don't want that sitting on there because it is a cleaner. And by the way, I did wash the beads so I washed them incredibly well that way there was no um, color residue on them and the one last test I wanted to show you and see it comes off on here it's yellow on each one of them that I did these were in the Goodwill last week. Beautiful. These are from the 60s. And I wanted to show you the semi-chrome on those. See, spotless. Nothing, no transfer, 
no color whatsoever. Not only that, but these are incredibly heavy. These weigh about 90 grams and they clunk really loudly. <laughs> By the way, these are for sale if you're interested. It is a stunning, absolutely stunning. It's carved, it has rhinestones, it's a fur clip. So I'll do 60 on this one. These are stunning clip-on earrings. I'll do 20 on these. And these are also clip-on earrings. And I'll do 20 on these also. Now these are just amazing. It has, as I said, the older pre-1940s roller clasp. They are tie, hand tied in between, but the beads are um, coming through them. Just stunning. I'm going to say one fifty on these. Beautiful. This piece is just gorgeous. I just can't get over how pretty it is without any marks. It reminds me of a, a Monet, but I looked this thing over. I couldn't find any marks. Length on this is seven inches to the knot and then six inches from the knot down. One side is a double chain, the other one is just a flat chain. It has these faceted black rhinestones and the they do have a few scratches on them. No signature that I could find anywhere. I'm going to say, let's do, this is just stunning. Let's say $9 on this piece. Gorgeous. And it's so heavy and silky. Beautiful. This is beautiful. This is, I believe, magnesite. I think that's how you say it. Beautiful gemstone looks similar to turquoise and howlite. When cut and polished into slabs or beads, it features dark thread of veins, web-like matrix across the surface, making it attractive gem. It's used to simulate turquoise, dyed like howlite and dyed magnesite. Interesting, besides jewelry, it's also used for fireworks. As far as healing meanings, it's a popular stone for meditation. It's soothing and has calming properties. It's believed that the gem helps the wearer to think with clarity, adding the process of creativity and imagination. In terms of the chakra healing, it is known to encourage the powers of love. It is said to open the heart chakra, allowing a person to find well-being, personal happiness, and joy. In turn, the gym helps to boost self-esteem. Nice. So these are beautiful slabs. It is, let's get a measurement on it. It is 14 inches, so 28 inches in total. It has 17 slabs. This is stunning. When you look these up online, they're expensive. Uh, let's say, I'm gonna say $50, because these are just stunning. Listen to that clack. Love it. Nice stones. This is 
a very nice necklace. It's A for Accessorize. That is the company. It has a antiqued Rolo chain with a corded fabric chain. It has rhinestones, metal, glass, and acrylic beads. A very pretty has some nice flow to it. A little bit of scratches on the metallic faceted bead. Let's see the length. Let's just undo it and get a full length on it. It is very pretty with these big balls, beads. It is 16 inches with a two inch extension. Very nice. Let's say let's say five dollars. Very nice. I like it. Very antique looking vintage. Okay, I thought I'd play around with this piece because it was bent. Um it still is a little bent, slight bend in it, but it was so patinaed. I thought, you know. This is a nice piece. I'm just gonna play around with it. Then, after cleaning it up some, I found some marks on both sides, and I can't read them, uh, but they are um, there. Uh, we know that it's sterling silver. We know that it is a pretty nice piece. So I thought I would do a couple of things and just show y'all. I did bend it, as I said, and it was super patinaed. Now, I I just did this part right here. I don't know if you can see it with this lighting, but I cleaned this side. I did not clean this, and then I cleaned this side. So here's the choices. Simple Shine, which is wipes, and they're expensive but they do, boom, clean it super fast. And you can put them, in, you can use it, and you can put a baggie and then use them again. This you can get at Walmart, just a silver jewelry polishing cloth. It's a two cloth system. You clean it and then you polish it. I'm a believer in vintage, true hard vintage, especially Mexican pieces or Native American pieces, I would never clean. I also have this World Ultra Soft Jewelry Polishing Cloth. It's a, also a two cloth system. It has the polishing and the cleaning. And I thought, let's just try this in front of you and clean this part. And you just go back and forth, putting a little bit of pressure on. And that pulls off the patina. See, it's getting shinier. But as you're doing that, that bend is straightening out also because you're heating it up. But this actually is a very nice piece of sterling silver. And it's a collar, a stiff collar cuff. It is signed. So it just looks better. Let's put it up against the, there you go. So that's just one of those things. It can get cleaner in this area if you wanted. Just thought that was interesting. But it is a cuff, it is signed. I'm going to say, $20 on this piece because it does still have this slight bend, but it's a cuff that goes on your neck. It's a collar, but it is a very, very nice, nice weighted piece. There you go. Just like the bracelet cone, there is this necklace collar cone and we can measure it. So this piece right now is about 16 inches. But as I said, it can be moved in and out. So pretty cool, pretty cool um, device also. They're very inexpensive. You can buy it at any jewelry warehouse for like less than $5. 
Here is this piece a little closer up. It is very pretty. On the back, it says Murano. So very pretty. So let's say $8. And the chain is 18 inches or 20 inches with a one and a half inch extension. But that is a very pretty piece and it is signed. Okay, I believe this is some type of gemstone. However, it is really ate up with some, it could be glass, I'm not sure, but it has a lot of scratches and gouges taken out. So this is actually gonna go in craft. So that'd be a dollar. This is a very nice piece. It is kind of stiff, but it is super long and it is an open tassel necklace. A very cool crown uh, fittings. So that is kind of cool looking. It's super long. It is Twenty-four inches, so it's forty-eight inches, and the tassels are three and a half inches. So let's say five dollars on that. This piece is really nice. It looks super nice, but it is just plastic. You can see the seams. Super, super light, super long. So it is 22 inches, so 42 inches in total. So let's say $3. There is a lot of this. It's mother of pearl and I've already scooped some of it into the craft. It is a dollar. Um, very beautiful mother of pearls, but they're, the string is broke. So you would get all the pieces for a dollar. Here is a nice vintage. I believe this is, uh, this is so pretty. It is faux. Hand knotted three strands with a beautiful clasp. It's a slide in hidden clasp. No signatures. It's rhinestones, two green rhinestones surrounded by clear rhinestones. These are beautiful color. These are quality. And the long or shortest one is seven and a half inches. So definitely a choker, but very, very pretty. So let's say $6 on these. These are beautiful. Here we have a tiger's eye cut into a butterfly and then on a suede rope or strand. Looks like it's never even been tied. It was in a bag. So it's 10 inches, so 20 inches in total. So let's say $6 on this. This is very pretty. Unfortunately, this piece is broke. It has some missing rhinestones. And this piece I could not figure out, but it, it is, if you could figure this out, it is beautiful. The three center stones are dark and then lighter on the ends. And then there's three strands and then this. I mean, it looks good quality, but the rhinestones are missing on this part. So it's gonna go in craft for a dollar.
here we have some groovy printed disc. They're just plastic. So I'm gonna say $2 on these. These are pretty cool. Be a great groovy Halloween um, if you're a hippie for Halloween. Those are beautiful. This is a very pretty. It is silver tone with um, glass beads with these cute flower charms. The length of it is, let's get a length, it's a toggle clasp. It is eight inches or seven and three fourths inches. So let's say $4 on that. That is too cute, great color. These are glass beads in purple and pink. They are two and a half inches from the top. Let's say $4 on these. These are super nice. Here we have a tiger's eye. Looks like the way it's cut is into a point. So I don't know if you would call that, I'm not sure what you would call it, but it's a pyramid. Uh, gold tone, it does have some gold tone loss. It says skinny six or six skinny, and it is a size six and a half, but very cute ring. Let's say $3. We have a one earring and that's going to go in craft. This piece is really a pretty. It is by Bobble Bar and it is a stunning piece, but it is broke. I believe this part might hang from here. I'm not real sure. It looks like it hang. Here's the rings. And I see one place for it to hang. And this one might be broke. So this is just going to go and craft for a dollar. Just a string going in to craft for a dollar. This pair of faux pearls is a beautiful, gorgeous color tied in between, but they are broke. Um, they just need clasp on the end and that's it. But they are very, very pretty. So that's gonna go in craft for a dollar also. And also these beads. They're wood. And acrylic with some faceted acrylic so they are very pretty but the needs a class for the end and those are a dollar well there you have it hope you enjoyed part two of this thread up box this was a very unusual thread up box I enjoyed it I loved the different I items of course i love the vintage in this it's great pieces very very enjoyable to go through and see different things hope you enjoyed it as much as i did i appreciate you sticking around be sure that if you see anything that you like send us an email we will send you a paypal invoice and check that sold list below give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this if this is something that you enjoy jewelry come back spend some time with us subscribe below if you've already subscribed thank you so much we appreciate it hope you're having as much fun as we are and be sure that you know we appreciate you spending a little bit of your day with us and see you on the next one bye